First again tonight, that breaking news, Dorian upgraded to a Category 3 hurricane. Thanks for joining us. I'm Scott Wickersham. And I'm Allison Lott. As you can see, the outer bands are now starting to reach South Carolina. A few school districts in our area canceled class for tomorrow. Chester County schools saying the wind gusts could affect buses. Anton County also canceling class for tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Steve Edelson just received an update from the National Hurricane Center on Dorian's track. And all evening you've been telling us you noticed that I was forming more clearly. Yeah, Allison, ever since it left the Bahamas, it's been getting slowly better organized and it's now nearly completely symmetrical, much like it was earlier. Not nearly as strong as it was over the Bahamas, but the pressure continues to drop with each hurricane center, uh, National Hurricane uh, Hunter uh, pass through and now we've got a category three hurricane with top winds of 115 miles per hour. The other good piece of news is that it has started to turn. It's now moving due north and that takes Georgia off the hook as far as a direct landfall and much of the South Carolina coast but it may well spell trouble for the North Carolina coast. In the last hour, we've had wind gusts of 67 miles an hour in Savannah and 51 miles per hour. That's at Folly Beach in Charleston. This feature cast clearly we show you the path of the storm as well as how strong the winds are forecast to be. By the time we get up tomorrow morning, winds will be gusting to hurricane force in Charleston, and you can basically follow it north as we go through the day as the storm is forecast to turn to the right to the northeast, 60 mile an hour gusts in Myrtle Beach up to hurricane force tomorrow night. By early on Friday morning, we focus on the North Carolina coast where wind gusts will be 70 to 90 miles per hour. Rain, of course, the other big issue. We're talking about four to inches, eight inches of rain uh, along the coastline. But notice as you push west, it drops dramatically. Charlotte area will see very little, but there's not a lot of distance between the two. I'm going to break down our, our forecast area and show you what to expect in each neighborhood. But I want to head out to meteorologist John Aarons, who has spent the day out at Atlantic Beach. Well, rain, yes, wind, yes, but the top concern here at the Crystal Coast will be storm surge. Now we're carefully watching the tide tables. By the time we hit around midnight Friday morning, that's high tide, and that's what Dorian will be shoving a lot of water in. And so everybody is preparing right now, and they're trying to learn some lessons from last year of Florence. Florence brought a surge of about six to seven feet. It's certainly possible that Dorian could do the same thing. So you see a lot of people putting the sandbags, They've boarded up some of their businesses. Florence did incredible amount of destruction, destruction that they're still trying to recover from, but they are getting some lessons. They saw what they didn't do appropriately for Florence and where everybody's really truly ahead of the game this go around, the preparations. Florence still fresh on everyone's mind, but the good thing about Dorian, it will be fast out of here by Friday afternoon at least. Back to you. And the manager of this bar in Wrightsville Beach told us that he spent the day getting everything out and then moving his coolers up on top of the bar. He was hit hard by Florence last year. The storm is impacting the District 9 election. Bladen, Scotland and Robinson counties have all canceled early voting for tomorrow. Cumberland is altering its hours and only allowing voting at the Board of Elections. Bladen is also canceling early voting for Friday. The head of the State Board of Elections has the ability to order more days for early voting. Channel 9, of course, tracking Dorian's every movement and the impact on the Carolinas. We'll have those crews live from the coast tomorrow morning on Channel 9 starting at 4.30 a.m.